Lastly, we're going to look at the supraspinatus tendon. I prefer to look at this last because this is the area that we see most abnormalities. Now to make this examination as time efficient as possible, what I will do is have the patient take their right arm and slowly put it back behind their back pocket while keeping their elbow inward. This is termed the modified crass technique. What this does is free up the supraspinatus so it's not obscured and I can clearly visualize the tendon efficiently. There are two views we're going to look at the supraspinatus tendon. First, where we see most pathology will be in cross-section. And with this technique, we keep the notch of the probe faced upwards, and we're going to angle the probe diagonally down towards the navel or the belly button, maintaining contact on the patient. I visualize the supraspinatus tendon and its fibers. And I'm going to examine the supraspinatus tendon in both directions to clearly rule out any pathology. I'm gently maintaining contact and rocking the probe side to side following the length of the fibers. On top of the tendon here, we notice a little black thin line, which is the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. In patients with shoulder abnormalities, this bursa fills with fluid and is often the target of one of our injections. Next, I prefer to look at what's called the rotator cuff interval. And to do this, I maintain the same position that I'm currently in. And I'm going to slowly move the probe medially towards the patient. This will allow me to visualize the bicep tendon as well as the subscapularis tendon. On the left of the screen is the supraspinatus tendon. Next, there's the bicep tendon, which is the white circular structure seen. And just adjacent on the right to that is the subscapularis tendon. In patients with tears, we measure the interval between the supraspinatus tendon as well as the subscapularis tendon. If there's increased distance between the two, it's suggestive of a tear. Lastly, we're going to look at the supraspinatus tendon in its longitudinal view. I place the notch of the probe facing towards the patient's ear, which is a easy to remember landmark. Maintaining contact with my hand on the patient's shoulder with the probe angled up towards the patient's ear, we can see the rotator cuff in what's commonly referred to as a bird beak type image, clearly seeing the fibers of the supraspinatus tendon, which are healthy in this patient. In abnormal cases, we may see partial tearing, blackness within the tendon, as well as thickening or tendinosis with chronic poor blood flow in the patient. What we're going to do is follow the length of the tendon on one end where it attaches at the bird beak as well as through the opposite end looking at the fibers and continuity to see if there's any abnormalities. Additionally one pearl to be aware of is a concept called anisotropy and what may appear to be an abnormality or a partial tear where you can see a hypoechoic or black signal within a tendon that may suggest a tear was really just a result of your probe not being perpendicular to the structure you're viewing. An example of that would be a blackness here in the tendon that you can see on the bottom aspect of the tendon as it inserts on the bone. But by rocking the probe side to side, I remove the blackness and realize that it was anisotropy.